Hello everyone and welcome to Matt Becker video. Today I'm going to teach you how to make music with your computer. This video is designed for someone who already understands music but has never really messed around with using a digital audio workstation or DAW. And I'm just going to show you how to more or less get your sound on the computer, manipulate it in the computer, and have a track ready that you can put out into the world. We're going to try and cover a lot, and we're going to try and do it quickly, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's get going. Let's start by looking at uh, the DAW that we're using here today. Uh, this one's called Reaper. Reaper, I've been using it for years. I like it because it is not only cheap to buy, it's something like 50 to $70 if you want to buy it, but you can also just do an free trial indefinitely. The free trial is technically 30 days, but you never have to actually buy it. You can just use it forever. So you can become familiar with it and then realize that it's actually a great piece of software. There are other DAWs out there that are probably free or cheaper, but this one is relatively fully featured. It's going to give you pretty much everything you need. And again, I've just been using it forever. So take what you can from this. And if you're using something else, apply it elsewhere. But uh, we're going to use Reaper. All right. So how are we going to get sound onto this thing? Huh? OK, well, first of all, uh, we're going to make a track. I'm just double clicking here. we got a track now. If you click the little red arm button that uh, sets it to record. We're ready to record something now. And we haven't set up anything yet. You may have no idea how any of this is set up, but I just wanted to get you started with that. That's how you start the recording process. And then once I hit record, if I have some input already in there, it's going to start recording it. If I don't hit that, then it's not going to record. It's good to know these things early on. Uh, delete that. But anyway, so okay, and we turn that on and we see here we have this section that asks for the input. Right now the input's mono, mono, input one, got stereo, MIDI, and these are all going to be important depending on what we're doing. So for right now, input one uh, is actually my microphone. Yeah, perhaps you want to know how we're going to get sound on here. Well, for most bedroom musicians, uh, you're going to want to get a Focusrite Scarlet. <laughs> uh, that's kind of like the, the audio interface for beginner musicians or bedroom producers because it's so cheap and it works pretty well. Um, the one I have has both it has two inputs and it can take both uh, XLR, which is uh, the input for mics, microphones, and then it can take a uh, quarter inch, which is how we plug in guitars. These things might be wrong. It doesn't matter. Just look at the shapes. The shapes are what you need. So let's start by pretending that we have our guitar and uh, I've got it plugged into uh, here's our quarter inch cable classic. So the thing that you plug into your guitar, you're going to plug it into your audio interface. I'm going to do that now. And typically the way I have it set up is I put uh, the first channel is my microphone. The second channel is my guitar input. And that way, if you if you have both, you can record vocals and guitar at the same time, get two separate tracks if you want. Normally, I like to separate these things, but we'll get into all that. So I'm just going to start by making sure that I set the volume. Uh, well, first, we're actually going to go back to this. So because I have my first input as my microphone and my second input as my uh, guitar, we're going to put input to um as as that are we hear anything we got sound okay great uh one thing you need to know is if we go to the options preferences and we look at our audio device right now i've got it in the wasabi mode now if you've never made music before if you don't know anything about audio cards or audio systems um just use this <laughs> There might be a little bit of latency in the things you record, but it's just pretty easy to set up and it can allow you to do a couple of different things. The other thing I would recommend, otherwise I'm not going to switch this now, but is to get the ASIO for all drivers. Those uh, 
or a different audio system that you download, install on your computer, and you use that, and it reduces your latency considerably. But because I'm using OBS and doing all this, I need to use Wasapi mode. And so we're just gonna use that because it's easy. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're back to uh, recording some guitar. And I didn't tune this or anything, so it doesn't matter. But um, so yeah, we're on input two, and you can see I'm getting signal. And I've got it turned up on my interface fairly uh, low, uh, just so that I can um, really make a loud sound like that and it doesn't necessarily peak. You don't want to overdrive your sound too early. You want to make sure there's plenty of headroom so that you can make a really loud sound and it won't um, blow up. We don't want it to blow up. So that's pretty good if I go, I mean, that's, that's fine. We're not gonna play too hard. Um, okay, so up here we got our metronome. Down by my head, uh, there is uh, the, the BPM down here. So right now we're at 120. If I turn the metronome and I play it, you're gonna hear that click, 120 BPM. We'll just do that for now, it's fine. You can set this, you can tap it if you want down here. You can kind of figure out a new PM, uh, BPM. Uh, but what you also wanna do is right click on the metronome. I like to have a count in before recording. Count in two measures, that way I can get kind of set up before I start recording. So remember I've got my track armed, it's record armed. We got sound coming in and we're gonna hit record. And there you have it. We have a little riff right here. So uh, yeah, as you can see, I just tried to follow uh, so that it fit into two bars. If I do a little select, drag and select here, and then I hit the repeat. If we listen back now, let me turn this off. Uh, once we reach the end of the measure, it will just loop back. So there's a little bit of clipping there right at the end, that little click that we hear. So one thing you can do to remove little clicks, uh, for now, we're just gonna shorten this. Uh, if I hold near the top right, there's this little uh, angle, little radius thing. Uh, just kind of click and drag, and that gives us a little bit of a fade. You don't have to do very much, just a little tiny bit uh, goes a long way. And then when it hits the edge, it shouldn't quite make that clicking sound anymore. See? So, okay, we've got a little riff here. Uh, one thing you'll notice is, yeah, again, we recorded kind of quietly, so the sound is kind of quiet. Uh, you can do a couple things to adjust the volume. Sometimes if you right click, go to item processing, normalize, then you can normalize to uh, the peaks, the zero. That'll boost your sound significantly. Uh, you don't always want to do this. Sometimes you like to have a little bit of space, uh, but sometimes I just like to work with a fuller signal so that when I mess with it on the mixer, I'm getting just a fuller, um, I don't know, I'm not having to boost it so much if it's a very quiet signal. This will introduce some of its own problems, but we'll address those as the time comes. All right, so we learned how to record some guitar into a computer. I mean, you basically just plug it into your audio interface, hit record, set it to the input, and uh, just play, use the metronome to keep it in time if you want. You don't have to do any of this. Again, you can just record to your phone, save it, pull a file in here, and then just uh, start editing that way. Uh, totally up to you. But if you want the cleanest signal, you probably want to get an audio interface and you want to use a guitar cable. If you use an acoustic, you're going to be using a microphone anyway. Uh, so that's, uh, are we going to do microphone next? We won't do microphone next. We're going to do another thing. I'm going to turn this off now. So now we've got a little piece of guitar, a little riff or whatever, but we want to add some drums, right? So you can record drums with a microphone. Uh, in terms of microphones, the one I'm using is uh, this. It's called a dynamic microphone. There's dynamic and there's condensers. Condensers are usually the ones that you sing into, and they're usually the ones that need phantom power or they need an auxiliary power source to power them. These ones don't need that. They just plug right in, and uh, they're mostly meant for instruments, 
but you can sing into them too. It's fine. These are like tried and true. Um, just find a microphone and use it. And again, this is the plug here is the big one and it's got three pins and I believe that's called XLR. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's how we'll, we can sing in to it later. Or you can get a headset like this. This introduces problems because I've actually got this hooked up into the computer. But um, yeah, use the audio interface if you can. But yeah, sometimes your computer has a little plug-in. You can get adapters. Um, you know, if you want to plug, <laughs> if you want to change your uh, your X, your eighth inch to or quarter inch to an eighth inch, you get one of these. You just plug your guitar into that and plug it in this and plug it in your computer. I don't know. I use these for all sorts of things. These are great to have around. Okay, so how are we going to put some drums on here? Well, I'm going to teach you the um, steal a beat. So what we're going to do, I think we can open this. Yeah, Microsoft Edge. All right, so we're going to try and steal a song of some kind. Let's see if I can just find, like, um, I don't want to get anything too crazy. Let's just go... Um, where, what would be a good place to steal a beat? Well, it's okay. So where do we get sounds? Well, you can search for all sorts of things. Why don't we just use YouTube? Because this might be how I approach, you know, taking music. And then, um, why don't we, we're going to do something, you know, the ethics are up to you, but we're just going to steal someone's like drum, um, practice or something. Let's just see, uh. Let's just see what this guy's playing. No, that's not good. I mean, you could use this for something, but... Um, what am I looking for? How about just a drum beat on YouTube? And we just... We're just gonna... We're just trying to prove a point right here. Your access awaits with City and Wow, that's loud. With your City card, you can purchase pre-sale tickets to create unforgettable moments. Unlock the excitement now. Okay, so he's playing drums, right? And it's like, what if we wanted to take this? Well, it's pretty easy. If we go back to Reaper, we're gonna make a new track. Now, what we're gonna do is uh, something a little tricky, or just be careful. We're gonna set the input. Um, yeah, what do I set the input as? I actually don't know. Is it stereo? I don't think so. Wait, how do I do this? How do I normally do this? If I go to preferences, first of all, we need to go from shared mode to shared loopback caution. This is where things, the reason it gets caution is it can feed back into itself if we're not careful. But I think so long as I mute this, if I kind of shrink this, where did, where did that sound go? If I start playing this loop again. Oh yeah, can you see how the track is, it's responding that? So that's what the shared loop back output allows. It allows you to arm your track, put input one or if it's stereo. So now it's probably sharing with the guitar. So I'm going to turn the guitar off. So what I want to do now is if I just, and notice that I muted it. If I didn't mute it, there'd be the feedback loop because uh, it would be playing through and I'd be hearing it and it would be feeding back in. So um, again, what we're going to do is we're just going to, uh, for now, let's just get away from this, turn this off. We got record on. We're going to hit record here. It's going. And if I start playing this again, all right. So thank you. Thank you, Jim Dooley. You are, um, your help has been much appreciated. All right. So we save that. And so now we've got this little string of, uh, of stuff here that is our drum loop. 
and I'll even just for now um, turn that shared, go back to shared mode, take the loop off so we won't have any issues. We can just turn, unmute this and listen. There it is. And we have the sound now and we just recorded it straight off of our desktop, which is amazing. So that's a great way to just take samples is to use that. You can download samples otherwise and just pull them in. Uh, but so what we're going to do, so I'm going to teach you now how to cut, cut up a sample. You can see all the little sounds. Drums are a great thing to cut up because uh, you can just um, see the peaks very easily. I made them really loud just now with normalization. And you can see exactly where like a certain beat comes in. Uh, one thing I'm going to do right now is turn off snapping so I have a little bit of more uh, control over where we end up in the sample. So I'm going to hit Alt-S and that disables snapping. So we're going to find the beginning of that uh, symbol. That's the sound I want. Or that one, that's the one I want. So you saw that big one right there. That's the big, or this is the big sound. So I want to start that, I want to be the start of my loop. So we're going to get in real close and you can see this is where the beat starts. And so we're just going to hit S, which is slice. And that's the start of our loop. All right, so if I bring it to the front of a measure like that, and I want to get, say, two bars of drums, okay? So let's just listen. That's it right there. So right here, I'm going to go in. I'm going to get right before that point, and I'm going to slice it. And we delete it. Okay, so now the one thing you'll notice, this drum beat doesn't fit two measures perfectly. It's actually a little bit longer. That's because it's at 95 BPM. And we want to get it into 120, which is what uh, this BPM is. So how are we going to do that? We'll, we'll start by turning snapping back on. So I can line the front of it up with the beginning of the measure. And then we're going to use Alt. Hold down Alt. And then if you go to the edge of the sample, you can see that little fist. And this will allow you the time stretch. Now, in some cases, you might need to go to the item properties, I think, and uh, preserve pitch when changing rate. This is something that you can um, set somewhere. I don't know. You need to make sure that somehow that is preserved. It might be in the options. Uh, I already have it set up like this. So uh, sorry if you have to figure this out on your own. But either way, you can take the little fist and you can drag into the two measures. And now you can see the rate has changed. It's a little bit faster now, 1.26. So if I play this now, every, everything's sped up and it's in two measures. You'll notice now that the drums sort of hit in weird spots. If I look really close here, that snare is a little late. Um, that's not necessarily a problem, but uh, it can be. Sometimes you may want to move things around. So if you hold down S or Alt, and instead of being at the edge of the sample, which stretches, is if you get in the middle, you can actually uh, click and shift things around. So you can line them up a little better if you feel like they're off at all. I may introduce some artifacts at the end, so you may want to fade those out if you... Uh, Get little artifacts. But now if we uh, take this back in, we can control uh, copy, stay on this line and paste. And if we listen back to this whole thing, there you have it. We can loop it again if we wanted. So you may find that you have a little drum loop and you're like, well, this is pretty similar to the original. Maybe I want to chop this up a little bit. Again, that's pretty easy. I mean, you just uh, use that slice command. If I do like this, hit S, it's a slice. You know, that first little long symbol sounds kind of a little long to me. So maybe I just delete that. I just take this and copy it twice. Or maybe, you know, I want this snare uh, to hit twice at the end. Say I want to make my uh, grid a little better. I can go to options, snap slash grid, snap slash grid settings, which is all L. We can change the grid spacing to one eighth. Now I have a little bit more resolution. 
And now, heck, I can just pull that back, take this uh, extra snare I got here, just throw it on the end, and now uh, shrink that and let's listen back to this new creation we've made. There you have it. So that's a pretty easy way to chop up samples is you just kind of look at where they are and uh, click around them and you know just um, copy and paste them moving them around and then you've got a breakbeat classic. So anyway so we figured out how to chop up a sample we figured out how to record guitar uh, and we more or less know how to record with a microphone. It's the same deal as a guitar. You know, I just can open up something like this, arm it. I've got input one. If I turn my input on my microphone up, then you'll start to see my voice and I can go something like, oh, I accidentally record both. Don't record both. Turn that off. See, Paul. Sometimes, if you record something, you might get these uh, extra takes um, that you don't want, and you can select them by selecting an active take. But when you finally want to commit to a take, if you hit Shift Alt T, that will give you the one. And I can uh, normalize this, which I love normalization. Turn that way down. So already I'm starting to play around with mixing these things a bit. Again, this is your mixer down at the bottom. This will allow you to get everything just the way you want, but we need a few more mixing tools here beyond just what we started. We need to know how to kind of shape these and make them uh, a little bit different or something better. So uh, one thing I did, uh, you know, sometimes I like to do this if I'm taking a sample and I'm, you know, stretching it or time stretching it, I may want to mess around with um, some different effects. Uh, to kind of change them and make them not sound like the original drums. So we're going to go over the, the most essential things that I use. Um, and I suppose the first thing in this case I'm going to show off is compression. So compression is really nice uh, because it basically you set a threshold and anything above that threshold it's going to soften. It's going to make a little bit less intense. So if we're playing our little sequence here we're seeing uh, we're, by the way, to do this, I hit effects. <laughs> this effects button is important. And then, uh, you know, when you click on effects, you can get this list of things. And to start out, just take Kakos. <laughs> That's the Reaper um, defaults. And all of these plugins are really great or fine and easy to get started with. So we're using Rea Comp right now, Recomp. And so again, if we're playing this, I'm going to turn this all down a little bit. Uh, you can see this is the drum track and this is the level. If I set the threshold below this level, you can see nothing's changed. But if I increase the ratio, it's going to increase the amount that it compresses it by. So, so if I set the ratio really high, everything above that is getting squashed down. And you can see that that's how much it's getting squashed. And this is more or less how a limiter works. A limiter is another um, similar thing. Rea limit will do the same thing, but it'll just automatically just hit a brick wall. There won't be softening. It'll just be a brick wall. So the lower I set that threshold, and as you can see, the effect of this is that you really brighten, bring out the transients. You bring out the the softer sounds and the bigger sounds, the sharper sounds uh, go away. So right, you can hear how kind of compressed or intense that is. In most cases, you're just going to want to use a compressor because it's just a little bit softer, you know? Yeah, I mean, the ratio, you can kind of play around with these things. The main things you need to be aware of are just like, What's your threshold? How much ratio? How much it's coming down? Uh, attack and release is basically how responsive it is. So the faster the, the, or the lower the attack, the, 
the more fast and into action the compressor will be, the slower attack it takes longer. And same release is the opposite. Okay, so we're giving, putting compression on the drums. Maybe we'll also uh, pitch shift them. For why not? Because that adds a lot of interesting elements. And so here we, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Your wet signal is your affected signal. Dry is what it originally was. We've got these two ways to mix them. So if I lower it an octave, you can see how different that is, or up an octave. Actually, what I'm going to use this on is the, uh, the little shaker sound I made with my mouth. So if I open this one up, uh, sometimes I just have to click on that again to get that menu. I copied and cut it from the other one I'm pasting here. But if I, I can change the semitones. Sometimes I like to mix things with negative six or positive six semitones, which is a tritone, and it can really kind of create more of a dynamic, fuller sound of sorts. Um, so yeah, you'll notice there's shift in semitones. There's also formant shifts, which is kind of like, uh, you know, what part of the spectrum uh, of frequencies you're working with. So even though I turn the semitones down, it's a lower pitch, I can increase the formants so it sounds like a from a brighter spot or lower it so it's from a lower spot and again i'm mixing in some of that dry signal here to just like uh, give it some quality anyway we're just going to leave that for now that's fine i'm just trying to learn these things so what are some other useful things to know? Well, uh, well, let's see, for our guitar, I mean, we could add some like distortion or we could add phase or uh, chorus, flange, all of those things offer different colors. We could add delay. People like to know about delay. I mean, delay is pretty straightforward too. You got your wet and your dry. You got your length. You can make it a musical length. Uh, you can set, if it gets darker over time, one thing I should really point out here, the, the really the most useful thing you're going to learn from any of this is actually uh, EQ. EQ is probably more important than any of these other effects because you can it helps you balance everything uh, very softly and minimally, and it can really change the quality of the sound. Like if I just take uh, my shaker sound, for example, I've got multiple things open here. Uh, my EQ, this is the the spectral quality of that shaker sound I made with my mouth, but you can see there's all these bass frequencies down here. I don't need any of these. I can cut those all out. They're not muddying up the mix anymore. Like a, uh, or like my guitar is another one where I kind of want... Um, you can see in my guitar signal I've got a ton of bass frequencies. I might want that a little softer, maybe in the middle band. Want it a little brighter. Maybe at the top I don't want it as bright, you know? Turn those really high sounds way down. So yeah, you can see that like there's the main types of uh, shapes for EQ are your band pass, which is like this thing right here, a little natural curve, that's a band. Then you have your shelves and your cutoff. So a high shelf looks like this. Um, a low shelf looks like this. But then you can also have it kind of cut, like there can be low uh, high pass, for example. It really severely cuts anything low, so it just won't play at all. Low pass, only lows go through, as opposed to high shelf, which like increases things. Um, but right, so EQ is really important. So having something like a graphic EQ like this can be really helpful especially when you're trying to identify like key little frequencies that are messing up your recording. Particularly if you record something kind of from a poor audio source, it's really nice to have EQ to sort of uh, take out all the unnecessary bits. So yeah, like taking out the highs, taking out some of the lows, pushing some of the middle ranges uh, can help make your sound uh, naturally balanced with everything else that it's playing with. The last thing probably uh, worth 
kind of pursuing is reverb um, in this. The Reaper reverb is not great. Uh, you know, you can use reverberate, which is kind of the most traditional standard. So I just put this on my drums, I think. So that's just the wet reverb. Usually you need a little bit of dry in there. Typically reverb, I mean, we're, you know, reverb makes things have space. So sometimes you want to bring your dry signal back a little bit, bring it down because you have to imagine it's farther away uh, from you or farther away in space. Uh, but not always, you know, you can kind of play around with these things. Uh, sometimes, you know, maybe you want a really dry signal, but just like a touch, just a touch of little hisses and fizzles at the top. And that's kind of what I got going on here. Turn the room size up, add more of those little fizzes. Here's it really saturated. Low pass, so I can take some of the highs out if I want it, if I want it really dark or, you know, if I want it really bright. But either way, I'm going to turn that down, kind of down. So, right, I mean, that's more or less the gist of it. So, right, we've learned how to record, you know, vocals or, you know, uh, put a microphone in, put a guitar, we know the steel samples and record them on our computer. And maybe we we'll want to record this as a song. So when we're done, we go file render. And we just want to make sure the, uh, at least personally, I like to go the normalize and make sure um, that it normalizes to a peak of zero. That's what I like normalizes on. So everything, if I accidentally mix my song too quiet, um, this will bring everything up to that zero point. So everything is as loud as it can be without peaking. I like to do that. I think it's important. That's kind of like a mastering step, which we're not going to really get into. Uh, but then you render your file and you've got a file and uh, you can put it in WAV format or you can put it in MP3. That's up to you. Whatever sound quality is important to you. Um, is that it? I mean, I feel like I've covered the basics, the things I think are most important. I mean, we could get into like synthesis just for a second um, and MIDI. So I've got uh, my MIDI keyboard here. This is an AKM322, is something like 50 to $100. I have no idea, but pretty cheap. And uh, it just plugs right in USB. If I go to my record, I go inputs, go MIDI. I've got it already set up on my computer. Um, and I did that, I think it just did it automatically, but you can always go options, preferences, uh, and go to MIDI devices and add it this way and make sure that your input is set to enabled. But yeah, so we turn the in input to AKM, put all channels, so it's just any MIDI channels going in and MIDI will allow me to play some notes. This is a good way if you have like, you know, um, synthesizers or drum, drum machines, digital drum machines, you can use MIDI to input all of that. Uh, how are we going to listen to it? So instead of Kakos, now I'm going to look at my instruments. And so pretty much anytime you have a plugin and you want to use a synthesizer, these are called VSTs. VSTs are the plugin format that you might use to uh, add new plugins like reverbs and other stuff. And you can learn about finding all sorts of free ones. For now, I'm just going to point out uh, the VSTi, which is an instrument that I'm going to be using that I really tend to use a lot of for synthesis is Surge XT. It's a free one. It's got a lot of different sounds. Um, I can go to pretty much anything, but we'll just pick an uh, electric piano. I go keys, EP1. And uh, yeah, then I can just play these sounds. I've got the input turned on. It's playing this. And yeah, you can get a lot of different sounds if you wanted to do like drums instead I think they even have uh, some percussion too yeah like a kick sound and the thing about this is it just kind of creates this uh, I mean if you've you probably are somewhat familiar with MIDI like if I just turn on some uh, keys again like I said we record something So I just made some nonsense right there, but you can see on the screen there, I made those little dots. I double click on this, I'm in the MIDI piano roll. And here you can edit all these things. You can add notes, 
you can right click and uh, drag to select a bunch. You can right click on the note itself and select everything in that row. You can right click on the end or left click on the end and it lengthens certain things or shortens certain things. At the bottom, you can change the velocity. Velocity is how hard the note was hit. Uh, if you select all of them with control A and then hit Q, then you bring up the quantize menu and you can make sure everything is quantized. And I generally recommend that you use don't use grid, that won't work. Use manual and then set your grid. If you have, want to swing, you can even add swing so it's a little bit more funky. But uh, then now when we play something, it's just, uh, it's just there. And that is our wonderful song for today. Uh, I hope this was informative and educational. This was my first attempt at this. And yeah, we don't know. We don't know if any of you learned anything, but I hope you had a fun time hanging out with me. And if you have any questions related to this uh, or found this to be pretty bad, just let me know and I'll do this all over again. Until next time, make some music, have some fun, and be your best self. Goodbye.